Hello and welcome back to another video of Total Organic Chemistry. In this video we're going to be taking a look at more stereochemistry topics, this time a discussion on absolute configuration in chiral molecules and how to determine it. So absolute configuration is a way for us to systematically name compounds that are chiral. So just like we have our rules for naming alkanes or other compounds, we also have rules for naming those same compounds if they happen to contain stereocenters. So systematic nomenclature for chiral molecules. And how do we do this? What are the rules like? Well, we use something called CIP priorities. And it stands for Kahn Ingold Prelog, which are three different scientists that developed this system of nomenclature. So to practice this, we're going to just take a look at a sample molecule and if you remember how to name this molecule this would be so we have four carbons our four carbon backbone and then we have one bromine so this would be two bromo butane and I've drawn in the stereochemistry here because we have a chiral center and how do we how did I know that? Well, we have four different substituents here. Here's one substituent. We have a different substituent here. We have bromine as the third substituent, and hydrogen is the fourth. And because all four substituents are distinct, that means that this carbon is indeed a stereocenter. And if you need more review on how to determine that, or if you need an introduction to chirality or enantiomers, please feel free to subscribe to my channel and take a look at those previous videos that I've uploaded. So what are the rules for our absolute configuration? Well, first, atomic number takes priority. So the higher the atomic number, the higher the priority. So what does that what do I mean by that? Well, what we do is we take a look at our stereocenter. So that's our carbon right there. And let's draw the substituents in a little bit more explicitly. We have CH2, CH3 there. We have a methyl group, CH3 right here. We have a hydrogen and a bromine. So then we rank our substituents by atomic number. And what we're looking at is only the atoms that are directly attached to the stereocenter. So atoms directly attached to our chiral carbon. So what are we going to do? So bromine is going to be the highest, right? It has a very high atomic number. So rank that as number one. And now we run into a little bit of a problem, right? We have, so carbon is our second highest atomic number, but we have two substituents that are carbon atoms. So we'll come to that, we'll come back to that in a second. And then hydrogen is the least. It has an atomic number of one, so it's going to be our lowest priority. Okay, great. So how do we differentiate between those two carbon substituents? Well now, 
we repeat. For any ties, so if there's any atoms that have the same atomic number, we keep going along that chain until we find a point of difference. So what do I mean exactly by that? Well, let's take a look at our stereo center again. So bromine. And then we have our CH2, CH3. and then our CH3 substituent last. Okay, so we know that bromine is one, and for these two carbons, we're going to look at the atoms that are connected to that carbon. So if I clarify this a little bit, Let's draw in explicitly all of those bonds. So H, H, and then CH3 on the end. And then same with these, we can draw in our three hydrogens. So what we do is we look for our first point of difference. So these are both carbon atoms. We have one carbon atom here one carbon atom here. So now we go one step further and we look at all of the atoms that are attached to those carbon atoms. And then we apply the same rule of atomic number. So for this carbon on the right, we have two hydrogens and one carbon bonded directly to that carbon. And on this side, we have three hydrogens. So again, we're looking for the first point of difference. So this carbon on the right will have a higher priority because it is bonded directly to another carbon as well as two hydrogens, whereas the carbon on the left is bonded to those same two hydrogens but also an extra hydrogen instead of a carbon. So that means that this carbon is higher priority, so we can put a two there, and then three, and then finally four for our hydrogen substituent. So this will come more naturally with practice. So let's take a look at our last rule. I'm gonna start a new page here. And now, we place the lowest priority substituent at the back. So what I mean is we kind of rotate the molecule and try to get it so that we can observe it with the lowest substituent pointing into the page. And conveniently, that's kind of how we've been drawing it already. So if I redraw what we had here, and methyl on this side, we have, let's redo our priorities here, one, two, three, and four. And thankfully, since we see that hashed bond to the hydrogen, we know that that's pointing into the page or behind the plane. So because hydrogen is our lowest priority substituent, we place the number four on that hydrogen, then that's good. We don't have to do any rotation or anything, but we will see how to do that in a little bit later in this video. So we have our hydrogen placed into the plane behind the other substituents. Now, we look at how the other substituents, so numbers one, two, and three, how are those arranged? So 
if you look at one, two, three, you kind of follow the pattern. So one to two to three, if that's clockwise, then that's going to be an R configuration. That's our absolute configuration of the stereo center. And if you go the other way, so one, two, three, and you find out that if you follow those and it turns out to be counterclockwise, then that will be an S configuration. And those come from the Latin words for right and left, rectus and sinister. So if we go back to our tubromobutane, we find, so our hydrogen is placed at the rear, and we find out that if we follow one to two to three, it is clockwise. So clockwise, remember, now is our R stereochemistry. So to name that compound, we have, so two bromobutane, and then to specifically designate it as this enantiomer, we place R at the beginning. So that is how you use the CIP priority rules to name one of those, one of these chiral molecules to systematically determine whether it is one absolute configuration or the opposite. So some brief notes. There are other rules to this naming system. So one of them is for isotopes. So if you're ever working, if you're ever working with any isotopic compounds, so maybe deuterium or tritium, then the atomic weight will determine the priority. So what I mean by that is, say if we have we have hydrogen, so just one proton, and then maybe we have deuterium, which has one, again, one proton and one neutron, so that's an isotope of hydrogen. They both have the same atomic number of one, but deuterium will be a higher priority than hydrogen, if you ever have to compare them directly. The last rule that I'll talk about is for double and triple bonds. You duplicate the atoms. So this is probably the most confusing, but thankfully it doesn't come up quite as often. So, for example, if we have some substituent, say this is our, I won't draw a circle there, it looks like oxygen. So we have some stereo center there. And then maybe we have a carbon carbon double bond. If we want to place the priority on this carbon, we want to figure out the priority of that. And we have to compare it, for example, to another carbon substituent. What we're going to do is take this carbon, still have the hydrogen, and because it has a double bond, we're going to duplicate single bonds. So what I mean is we're going to change this to a single bond to the carbon, and then we are going to place another single bond to that carbon. And then for this substituent here, we are going to duplicate again 
the first carbon. So if that's a little confusing, don't feel bad. It is the more confusing rule of this systematic nomenclature. But we're going to do another example where we utilize this rule, so we'll see if that helps a little bit. Okay, so let's take a look at maybe a more interesting molecule. And this one contains several functional groups. Again, I don't expect you to know what any of those do specifically. as we will study these and learn about these in later videos. But this is ibuprofen. So a very common painkiller. And this is the structure, relatively simple. So we're going to look at the stereochemistry of this and assign an absolute configuration. So how do we do that? Well, where is our stereocenter? Well, we look for any carbons that have four unique substituents. And for us, we only have one carbon like that. And that's going to be this carbon right here. We have a hydrogen, a methyl group. We have this carboxyl group here. And an aromatic ring there. So because those are four different substituents, we know that that, that carbon will be a stereocenter. So let's take a look at it a little bit closer. So we have our carbon, hydrogen, methyl group, and then I'll draw this out draw the carbon explicitly and then I'm just going to draw the first couple carbons of this ring I won't draw the entire rest of the molecule so this will be carbon carbon and then double bond there and we'll just draw a squiggly line here to show that there's more of the compound but we don't really we're not concerned with it right now so let's assign our priorities well we know that, so we have all three of these carbon substituents, so those are going to be tied at first. So let's just write one, one, and one. And then hydrogen, so lower priority has a lowest atomic number, so that's going to be two. Now we need to do our sort of tiebreaker rules. So how do we do that? Well, just like we did last time, let's draw this out. And let's draw all, all of our atoms in explicitly this time. I'm going to leave that oxygen for a second. So let's apply now the double bond rule that I briefly talked about. So for this carbon with the double bond to the oxygen, we need to change that to a single bond. Then we add another single bond to the oxygen. So double bonds convert to sort of duplicated single bonds. And then we take our carbon and, quote, bond that to the oxygen. So remember, none of these atoms are really here, but we it's a useful thing to do. It's a formalism, again, that shows us just how to name them systematically. We're not breaking any bonds or anything like that. We're just kind of drawing things in to make it easier to name. And then let's apply the same rule to the carbon over here. So we have the same single bond to carbon. And for the double bond, we change it to a single bond, add another single bond to the carbon, and then bond that second carbon 
to a first carbon, so to this. Whatever that atom will be is going to be the same as this one. So again, I know that that's confusing, but thankfully it doesn't come up too often, and again, it will come with practice. So let's get back to our priorities. Now we know that, so each of these are carbon, so now we have to go one step further. So this carbon here has three oxygens bonded to it. This carbon here has three hydrogens. And this one here has three carbons. So we look at our first point of difference. is going to be one oxygen atom, hydrogen, and a carbon. The oxygen has the highest atomic number, so it's going to be the highest priority. Carbon has the second highest atomic number, so it'll be number two. And hydrogen has the lowest, so it will be three. And then we take one step back, we already figured out that this hydrogen substituent is going to be the lowest priority, since it's directly bonded to our stereocenter. So, that was a lot, but now we have all of our priorities for each of these substituents. Now we have to apply our last rule, is to place that lowest priority substituent in the rear of the plane. So behind us, or behind the paper rather. So right now, our lowest priority substituent is the hydrogen, and it is pointing towards us with that wedged, bolded bond. So we need to kind of rotate our molecule around that sort of vertical plane, or vertical axis, so that we can get something like this. So imagine just turning this around. Now we have this on this side, this aromatic ring. Then we have our hydrogen pointing into the plane and methyl group coming out towards us. And then we have our C double bond O, OH on this side to the left. So we haven't changed anything, we've just rotated it to a different perspective. Or instead of rotating it, you could think of we're looking at it from behind. So instead of looking at it from how I drew it on the, on the paper, we might now be looking at it from the other side of the screen or the other side of the paper. And let's redraw in our priorities. So we have one, two, three, and hydrogen is four. Then, what is our last step? Now we look at substituents one, two, and three, and we see whether they are arranged clockwise or counterclockwise. We figure out that it is indeed counterclockwise. So counterclockwise is going to tell us that this stereocenter is S. Great, so now we have S ibuprofen. which is interesting because the S enantiomer of ibuprofen is actually the active enantiomer. So S ibuprofen, arranged in this configuration, is the compound that actually does the, the job of ibuprofen. It does the pain killing. Whereas if you had the other enantiomer, R ibuprofen, it is actually inactive physiologically. So it would not do anything in your body. So maybe that is an interesting application of chirality 
or absolute configuration in these compounds with stereocenters. And that is all I wanted to talk about for this video. The next video we'll be taking a look at compounds with multiple stereocenters and how to represent those. So thank you again for tuning in to Total Organic Chemistry. Like I said before, please feel free to like and subscribe to my channel. And also please consider donating to my Patreon page. It really helps me to continue creating content for you. Thank you.